friends. Happy Wednesday, everybody. Welcome back to the Well Let's Go podcast. I hope you're having a great week, but per usual, it's about to get so much better. And I mean that for real. Y'all are about to get so excited because we have a highly anticipated guest coming back on the podcast, Jackie Hill Perry. Welcome back to the Well That's Good podcast. Hi, Sadie. Hi, Jackie. <laughs> Girl, I love you. You know, you just make me laugh. You That's make funny. me laugh. That's good. We need joy in the world. We do. Yeah. Hey, your passion message was all about joy. Uh, I was like... Which one? The, the exhortation of joy. Oh, right? yes, 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 yes. Yeah. That was so good. Yeah, you know, it was It was the, the witchcraft that I got distracted by. But then we, oh. got, we got to the joy part. Well, that happened too. <laughs> that was good. That was one of those, hold up, wait a minute. She's yeah. speaking to something specific in the room and it was needed. And you know yeah. what's so interesting about you saying that though? So you said that in Atlanta. I don't know if you planned to, to go there or that was just the Holy Spirit leading you in that direction. Mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. But in Dallas, uh, Don Cherie called out the same thing. at Pat. So she was in Dallas and you were in Atlanta and y'all said the same thing. So that was definitely needed. Which is crazy. Yeah, I heard that after the fact during lunch, somebody told me that. And I was like, oh, so that means the Lord really wants to zero in on this practice um, and kind of warn the church to just be careful. Yeah, mm-hmm. no, that yeah. was so good. Yeah. Um, but you also got to the joy too, which yes. was great. Yes. <laughs> it was so good. Um, well, what I love about your messages and your books is that, you know, I talk about joy. I love talking about joy. The Lord is our strength. But when you talk about it, you're so deep and you add such a depth and it makes you really think about the things that we're saying and the things that we're talking about, and the things that we believe. And it really pushes me um, and my faith and challenges me, which is so good. And so um, your new devotional book is nothing less than just that. It pushes you. It's deep. It's so good. It's called Upon Waking. If you have not gotten this book, which I know many of you have, if you have not gotten it today, go buy it right now. Stop the podcast, pause it, go get this book because it is going to encourage you so much. But Jackie, what made you um, want to do a devotional book? Yeah, the publisher asked me to. And <laughs> <laughs> that's real. <laughs> initially, I was like, no, nah, because I just I don't think I'm a devotional kind of person in life. I don't really do devotionals. Um, and I think I had kind of a just a negative view of them because of some of the ones that I've like sifted through. Cause they just felt really shallow and cute and pretty mm-hmm. when to me, life isn't pretty, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and so I wanted something, or I always want something that has a layer of depth and realness mm-hmm. to it that like actually mm-hmm. accords with what I'm going through. And so that process of thinking was like, okay, why don't you just write what you want to read? Um, yeah. And so I just decided to do it. And I think the Lord is using it. So, so that's cool. much. It's so good. And it, it's one of those books that, um, you know, I'm, I'm sure you have these books in your life where like you read something mm-hmm. and then all throughout that day, that mm-hmm. thing that you read that morning just keeps coming up in conversation. And then mm-hmm. the next week you're still talking about that thing that you read. And it's like those things stick with you. And I think because it makes you think so much, like I was reading um, one and it was talking about you said the godly ask God questions. And I love that. And you were like, but why would we not ask God questions? Because his ways are not his, our ways and his thoughts are not our thoughts. And I, I really, I, I can't stop bringing that up in conversations with people. It just keeps coming up because <laughs> I've always quoted that verse, like his ways are not our ways, his thoughts are not our thoughts, almost as like this encouraging thing of, which it is encouraging. But I love how you said, if you really think about that, the God who we're talking to, his ways are not ours. His thoughts. So that would lead us to have to ask him questions. I love, I love that you, I love that devotional. But even in that, we'll just start right there. Um, writing these things, thinking about these things. Where is it thoughts that you were just having, um, that you were just putting on paper? Were you just mm-hmm. reading through the Bible and writing down your thoughts? What was the process like? So one of the interesting approaches to this book is I decided to write it at the same time that I decided to get off Twitter. This was about Mm. a year and a half, two years ago. And I was like, you know what? I have a lot of content on Twitter that just came out of my own processing, whether that was in prayer, whether that was in conversation with people, whether that was through seasons and trials and circumstances where I might have had like a little quippy thing to say or thread to do. And I was like, why don't I just take some of my tweets 
and explain them, like flesh them out, you know? And so, so instead of it being 180 characters, it became 500. And so that it did, it's an overflow of my own life and brain, right? Um, Cause to me, I remember the first time I really paid attention to the book of Habakkuk. And I was like, this dude is asking God a lot of questions, you know? Mm. And they sound accusatory, <laughs> but mm, when you yeah. look at the psalmist, they do the same thing. And then when you look at the cross, it's like, oh, Jesus is asking God a question too. So why are we not doing that? If That's we see good. examples of it all throughout scripture, mm-hmm. that God welcomes our curiosity, I think in our in our generational and cultural moment, I think that would actually be a big relief for people to know that That's they good. can ask questions to God. That's good. I yeah. love that. With asking questions to God, because sometimes me and my husband talk about this because there will be something maybe that happens that you know, leads you to ask questions like, God, why did you do this? Or what was this about? Why, why, why is my life panning out like this? How do you ask God questions in such a way that like you're curious in asking God and not doubting him or it like yeah. it going from being curious to being like, I'm doubting your goodness yeah. I'm doubting your faithfulness. Where is that kind of balance in that line? I think that's where knowing scripture comes in, you know, because the way you, relate to your husband is like it changes and develops according to what you know about him. Right. Hmm. And so you, Hmm. you approach him in a very particular way because you know him well. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think the same is to, to be said about God. Like when you recognize that, okay, even Genesis one, one, if that's all, you know, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. It's like, okay, you're eternal. You're sovereign. Hmm. You're the creator. I'm a creature. And so the Mm. way I approach you needs to have some level of honor and respect for Mm. even that. Right. Um, But it also must mean if you are the creator and if you are eternal and if you exist outside of time, then you're also very much different from me. And so Mm. I have to be curious without being accusatory. Um, Mm -hmm. And so I think that comes from a place of reverence. Um, And I've often had times where, I'll say that to God, God, if, if this, if even if my question or what I'm asking you is bogus, show me, you know, (laughs) like, like teach me how to talk to you. And I, 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 so even like, even that kind of thing, like, for example, in our marriages, in my marriage, I remember, um, Preston would often get mad at me because I would say things that he would consider disrespectful. I didn't think it was disrespectful because I was only communicating to him how I've seen my mother communicate to people or how I've seen women in my life communicate to people. And so I I started to ask, okay, show me what you think, like, what does respect sound like to you? Right. Mm -hmm. So instead of me just assuming that I know how to be respectful, let me actually ask him, like, how do you want me to treat you? And I think Good. that's the thing with God. It's God, teach me how to talk to you. Teach me Good. how to ask you questions. And he'll do it. That's so good. I love that. And it's kind of making me laugh thinking about this because it's almost even similar to me talking to you in some ways, because honestly, I, uh, you know, I'm a little intimidated by you because you're (laughs) incredible. No, I mean, true. I mean, you're incredibly wise, incredibly smart. You have a depth about you. And um, also, you know, we just have different personalities. Uh, I come on and I'm like, hey, Jackie. And you're like, hey, Sadie, you know, like, (laughs) we're just different. But I remember the first time I like really had a conversation with you was at um, Jen Johnson's uh, retreat. And I was kind of, I was kind of like downing myself in talking about how awesome you are and how you're so real and you're so awesome all of a sudden. And you looked at me like, Sadie, you're real. Like, you do that too. You just do it in your own way. And it was really encouraging to me. And I feel that way with God. It's like when you come to Him, sometimes you might feel like, oh, you're so small. And it's like, but He also empowers you with His Spirit. He yes. also created you. So He loves you. He values you. Yes. But also you do have so much to learn from Him. So coming in that reverence and that respect and wanting to learn and seeing that side. So as you were talking, I was like, you know what? It's kind of the same as this conversation right yeah, now. But That's good. Uh, I love that. And I love how you were talking about, you know, acknowledging, okay, God, in the beginning, you know, you created the heavens and earth. This is who you are. And even just you saying that, it's taking scripture and really believing it. And there was um, one one devotion that you wrote, and it was so good. And it was talking about how a lot of us, you know, will go into church and we'll sing these songs, but do we really believe what we're saying? And I wrote down this quote. You said, 
maybe the problem with maybe the godlessness in our country is because we have too many soldiers with no shields. Mm. You obviously break that down the devotional, but can you talk a little bit about uh, what you wrote in that? If you remember, I'm putting you on the spot, but I love that point. It was so good. I got to say, you can call me old fashioned, but I love uh, just speaking the truth, especially speaking the truth in love. I'm not here to offend anyone or say them hard, but I think just speaking truth always sets people free. Um, Jesus says you will know the truth and the truth will set you free. And sometimes the truth is hard to hear. Christian and I definitely feel strongly about speaking against um, pornography because it's not good for your life. Sometimes that's hard to hear, especially when you're suffering from an addiction, but it's true. That's not good for you. We've talked a lot about this on podcasts, but how important it is to safeguard our hearts. So whether you're a man or a woman, married or single, I want to encourage you to be your best self. And that includes freedom from pornography. A great step you can take in that journey is to get Covenant Eyes on your devices. Covenant Eyes is an accountability-based software that can help you find freedom through support, accountability, and community because we got to look out for each other. And it definitely is hard to fight those battles alone, which is typically the battles you do fight alone. So here's how it works. You sign up, install the software on your device, then choose someone you trust to hold you accountable for the activity on them. With Covenant Eyes, you are never alone, which I know that can seem a little scary, but that is going to help you so much. So don't let shame keep you from the life God has for you. Take back your life, your marriage, and your relationships. Try it for free for 30 days by visiting CovenantEyes.com and enter the promo code WOE at checkout. And there's also an app, but you're going to want to sign up on the website first. CovenantEyes.com and use the promo code WOE at checkout. Go check it out, y'all. I know it's going to help you so much. Because I think that's the the devotional about spiritual warfare. Um, and God is really kind because so, somebody tagged me in it two days ago. So that's the only reason I remember. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome. I know. But, I put you so on the spot. No, it's okay. So in Ephesians uh, 6, Paul mm-hmm. gives us the armor of the spirit. And he talks about the shield of faith and how the shield of faith extinguishes the flaming darts of the evil one. And that part of the armor has stuck with me for a minute because I remember when I started to really process through the idea that when we talk about spiritual warfare and the enemy, the devil having schemes, having attacks, having all the things, I think we think that he wants to destroy our ministry or he wants to destroy our marriage or he wants to destroy our friendship when really he uses like he disrupts those things as a way to destroy our faith. Hmm. Why? Because if our faith is a shield, if it Hmm. protects us, then if we put our faith down, we're exposed to the devil. But not Hmm. only that, if it's faith that pleases God, Hmm. then it not only exposes us to the devil, but it also hinders our communion and intimacy with Jesus. And Hmm. so I think what we have in church and even within our own selves is that it's just easier to quote something to put it in our captions, to sing a song, than it is to actually believe it, to believe that God is good when life is hard, to believe Mm. that God is sovereign when we are suffering, to believe that God will provide even when we don't have a job, right? Like Mm. that is when your faith is tested. Do you really believe it? And that's what I meant by that, is that like, it's just so much easier to say all the things than to actually believe it as true. But that's okay. I think that's where... That's where scripture, that's where the Holy Spirit, that's where community, that's even where worship serves us. Because there's been times where it's hard, even though I may not believe what I'm singing, there's something about singing it that warms my heart to the possibility that it is true. You know, so even worship isn't in vain, you know, the Lord uses it. I love that. Um, I was thinking about to, you know, you write about prayer and mm-hmm. how it was, you talk about how, um, and no wonder we get bored when we pray because we have mm. this social media culture where we're yeah. always entertained by the things that, you know, we're seeing. And then you sit with the Lord and you're trying to pray <laughs> and you only have like a 12 <laughs> second span because, you know, uh-huh. you're thinking about this, that and the other. Yeah. Um, but even in that, you talk about how to lean into even the 
boringness of it because maybe that's actually purification. And so I love how even you're talking about, you know, when I'm worshiping, even if I don't believe it yet, but it, I'm, I'm singing it over myself and it's warming my soul. It's leading me. So maybe even in prayer, even if I'm a little bored in it, maybe God's doing something in yes. it. Can you speak to that with prayer? Because I do think that that was such a great point that you wrote. Man, I remember when, so I have four children, eight, five, three, one. And my oldest, she wanted to go to the bathroom and like she paused her show. And then one time, like there was commercials and she skipped through it. And I said, she has no concept of having to sit through a commercial and not Hmm. being able to pause a cartoon. When I was young, you know, I was born in 89. (laughs) There was it, you just had to hold your pee. Like you just you just gonna have to miss it. You know what I'm saying? Like there is no rewind, there is no forward, there is no pause. And yeah. I thought about even me when I'm in the doctor's office. And like I could just, I just don't have I don't have to wait on anything, Sadie. I don't. Mm-hmm. Like if we're hungry, we got Instacart, we got yeah. Uber Eats. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I, I was I was thinking about, oh, this impatience is showing up in my spiritual disciplines. Because now when I read the Bible, I'm not patient. Right. Yeah. Now when I'm praying, it's just like, okay, I'm just sitting here just talking. And so I think we have to be aware of how the way our society is constructed, how that is trying to pull us away from God. And so Mm -hmm. when you read dead people like the Puritans. Mm -hmm. I think one of the reasons why they had so much depth is because they were they were not as distracted as we are. That's so true. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like they could just they didn't have TV. They didn't have social media. They didn't have Wi-Fi. They didn't have Internet. So all they could do was think all they could do was process and they weren't isolated. So they were doing Mm -hmm. all of that work in community. And so I think as it relates to prayer, I think one, be aware that it's okay to feel bored. But don't stay there because you have to you have to have the faith that says I'm talking to a God who is alive. So he hears me. He's with me and he will respond as he wills. And so it's a thing. That's good. Um, Ben Stewart talked about that last year at Passion. We were talking about we've lost our ability to be in awe, which is a really big problem because Mm. you can't be in awe when you're distracted. Like you can't sit there and behold when you're looking and distracted. Every time your phone dings, you're looking away. You you miss that, you know, and it's so true. And so after he said that, I was kind of feeling like I should delete social media for a little bit. So I ended up deleting it for like the first seven, eight months of this year. So I got it back in August and I deleted it in January. It wow. was so good for me. That's but you a know what? So it was a long time and it was it was it was so good. I and mean, if I didn't feel called to it, I would keep it off because yeah. of how much I learned from it. But I also need it even with having it now, it's just different than it used to be. You know, it, it restructured everything for me in a good way because, you know, I always delete it in the month of January, but mm-hmm. I, every time in February, I go right back to my old ways. You know, I'd be like, that was great. And now back to it. But I think eight months was like a really good cleanse of like, okay, I'm not going back the same. But it's so funny because um, at the beginning of this year, I have this thing where I'm sure a lot of people can relate where I read books, but I never finish them. And so this year I was like, this is not a huge goal, but I'm going to finish 10 books this year. Like not just read them, like finish them. Mm -hmm. And so in my time without social media, I finished, well, no, not all of them. I finished six. Okay. That's a lot. It was good. I know. Finishing. Because you got babies. I know. So (laughs) that's real. That's hard. So I finished six. And since I've had social media, guess how many I finished? One. Okay. Uh So I've noticed that like in my time of not having that distraction, I was actually able to like sit and read even with the kids. So it's not the kids are not necessarily the problem with my reading time. It really is. I'm replacing it with social media, which, you know, again, social media can be good for different reasons, but it can be a massive distraction and take you away from actually pondering things, yes. thinking more deeply, um, praying more intently, reading things and meditating on it. And this last book that I did just finish was Battlefield of the Mind by Joyce Meyer. It was so good. And one of the biggest emphasis that she had throughout the whole book, just kind of like an underlying message was meditate on the yes. word. Yes. Well, how are you going to meditate if you're so distracted? Yeah, because we are, we are meditating. We're just not meditating on scripture. 
We're meditating on somebody's post. We're meditating. Even podcasts can be a form of meditation because I'm listening and processing and thinking about somebody else's word more than I am God's word. And I think that shows you how much opportunity we actually do have to be in scripture. We have so much. We really do. Like I, I remember a couple months ago, I was like, let me challenge myself. So I got on, I was on the Stairmaster. And usually on the <laughs> Stairmaster, I either listen to a podcast or I watch some on YouTube. And I was like, let me listen to the Bible. And so here I am hiking up these stairs, <laughs> listening to judges. And I'm like, this looks and feels crazy because it's not as exciting. It's not as entertaining, yeah. but it was ministering to my heart. You know what that's I'm saying? Cool. And I was yeah. just like, I think that's what God is after is just finding moments throughout your day to seek him. Yeah, it's so true. Yeah. It's so true. Last night I told Christian, I said, I'm going to get up. I'm going to go on the walk in the morning. He's like, which I don't normally do, which is mm-hmm. really going to expose me. I'll go ahead and expose myself before I say his response. He was like, mm-hmm. why? Like, are you going to exercise? <laughs> He's like, are you going to exercise or are you going to like clear your head? It's like, I really just, I, I really have been having some things that I need to pray about. And I've been just like passingly praying about them in my mm-hmm. mind, but I need to like walk it out and That's actually good. talk to the Lord about about it. So sometimes you also just have to throw yourself into it. It's like, I know if I just wake up and sit around, I'm not going to be as uh, intense as I would if I just go on a walk and yeah. can just talk out loud to God. So yeah. I think you also have to position yourself for it. Um, so you mentioned, you know, you have two, you were talking about me having two kids and that can be kind of hard to finish books and you have four kids. And, you know, I, I do think about that because whenever you have kids, I don't know if this happened to you, but your brain just sometimes will just be like, whoop, Child. like you forget everything. Mm-hmm. Your brain is like, you'll be talking to somebody. You're like, what was I saying? Mm-hmm. It's a whole mom brain thing, but you have managed to be a mom of four kids and still have a lot of depth to you. Um, how do you how do you do that? Like, how do you keep your brain um, thinking deeply, thinking wisely, thinking about things of God and all this when you do have four kids? And not everybody listening to this podcast has kids, but they do have tons of distractions. Yes. How do you just keep your brain fresh? So I got to tell you about my gift giving skills, okay? I love gift giving. I'm intentional about it. I think about it. But my timing is where I get really off because I'll be like, oh, I want to send you a gift. Send me your address. And then I think about forever. I know what I want to send, but then I don't want to go to the post office. It takes me too long to get there. Then the schedules get busy. And so that's why I got to tell you all about stamps.com because you can actually get stuff to people on time and it's so easy. You can do it from the comfort of your own house. Y'all, we all know the holidays are fun, but they can be a little hectic. But stamps.com makes things easier than ever. It's like having your own personal post office at your home or your office. All you need is a computer and a printer and stamps.com will even send you a free scale so you have everything you need to get started. With the stamps.com mobile app, taking care of business while on the go is super quick and simple. You can schedule a package pickup through your dashboard and connect seamlessly with every major online marketplace and shopping cart. Not only does stamps.com save you time, they save you money too. Stamps.com can get you huge carrier discounts of up to 84% off USPS and UPS rates, which is great for your bottom line. Stamps.com automatically tells you the cheapest and fastest shipping options so you don't have to spend time searching for the best deal. And if you're running low on supplies, Stamps.com puts everything you need right at your fingertips with their supply store. Stamps.com has been helping over 1 million businesses save time and money for the last 25 years. My dad and mom's company, Duck Commander, actually uses it as well, as well as Book Commander, Fin Commander, and I myself use it for LO. It's just so nice nice because we use the scale that they sent us to weigh all of our stuff. Plus the girl on our team said she literally just prints it off right from her desk, all of the stuff that she needs. So not only do you not have to go to the post office, you don't even got to stand up if you don't want to. To get access to all the shipping services you need from your computer anytime, day or night. Lines, traffic, and waiting are a thing of the past with stamps.com. Give your business the gift of stamps.com so that your mailing and shipping is covered this holiday season. Sign out with promo code WOE for a special offer that includes a four week trial, plus free postage, and a free digital scale. No long-term commitments or contracts. Just go to stamps.com, click the microphone at the top of the page and enter the code WHOA. This is going to sound very simple, but I love the Lord. I love him. And so I think because I love him, I want to know him. I'm curious about him. 
And then there's so many things inside of me that wants to, to, to move me away from him. And so even me thinking and processing and praying and talking and confessing and reading, all of that is functioning as a means of let me stay close to you. You know, that's cool. Um, yeah. And so, I, so I think that perspective then shapes how I move with parenting, how I move with business, how I move with ministry and all the things. Um, yeah, I like that, that. that's probably the best. The best <laughs> th- that feels broad, but that really is the thing is I, I that just, really is it. Yeah. I love them. No, that really is it. Because I think that if you, if you didn't say that, and if you sat here and you gave people steps and tools, people would strive to to do that. But then, you know, a weekend that's, I don't have time for this or whatever, yeah. but it's not about making time necessarily. It's not about um, a routine. It's about truly a relationship. When you love him, when you desire to know him, yeah. you just think about him. I mean, back to the way that you think about your husband, you just think about him because he's your husband, because you love him. Thinking about what he's thinking about, you're thinking about what he's doing, yeah. thinking about what y'all are going to do together. And it's the same with the Lord. When you love him, you just think about him and you yeah. see him everywhere. Um, you know, and, and there's a scripture I could say, this comes to mind now, is when Paul tells Timothy, keep close watch on your self and your Mm. teaching for Mm -hmm. you will save yourself and your hearers. And so I also, I also know that I can only give my children. I can only give people that listen to me. I can only give the people in my church. I I can only give them what is being poured in. Right. That's right. And so some of that work is to protect me from Mm -hmm. harming you, but also to help me serve you. So I mm-hmm. see knowledge in particular as a as a as a as something to steward as a service to people. So even me going to seminary, right, is one because I'm a nerd. I like to learn, <laughs> but but it's also like no, like I want to give this information out. That's great. And, and so even like having the depth and, and all the things, it's just like no, like this is what 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 am I here for? Mm-hmm. If if yep. not to serve people with the particular gifts God has given me. So if he's made me a teacher and a communicator, then that needs to be the thing that I am putting all of my energy into doing well. That is great. I was going to say the same thing. So, so I'm so glad you said that. And I love that you put that scripture to it because I haven't thought of that before. Mm-hmm. But I think about that because my dad says, he's like, I wish everybody had to preach, you know, any given Sunday, because if you did, you'd think differently through the week. Because if true. you knew that you were the one that had to preach, it would make you really think about what you're going to say, which would mean you're leaning into God. You're asking mm-hmm. him questions. You're reading the word. You just mm-hmm. prepare your life different when you know yes. you got to get on stage with a microphone because you you know that yep. people are listening. People aren't. That's a big deal. It's weighty. You you take that with great responsibility. That's and so facts. my dad's like, I wish everyone had the opportunity. And it's too. Maybe you should just create yourself the opportunity and just mm-hmm. be like, hey, I'm going to share this with someone today. Mm-hmm. But it does. It gives you a different perspective because you're always thinking. You're always you're always leaning in. You're always kind of looking around. Even you know, we've been watching Paw Patrol with Honey for like every <laughs> single day. Uh-huh. And, you know, she wants to watch it twice a day if we let her. Paw oh yes. Uh-huh. But even watching Paw Patrol, I'm like, okay, God, do you have anything in here that you know I could use that uh-huh. would help people learn about you and see? any analogy and a lot of the movies that I watch honey I have found Paw Patrol is great I have yet to find Mm. you know the one that I'm gonna preach in a sermon yet but Mm -hmm. still it's just like asking God what do you want to show me in this Mm -hmm. scenario and then it's so cool you know what's crazy Sadie Hmm. this is what's crazy this is what excites me because we're on this podcast what day is it it's November 21st Right. We're talking about prayer. We're talking about being curious. We're talking about staying connected to the to the vine, abiding in him, all the things. And you use this story. That was the ministry. That <laughs> is the true. thing that God used. Right? And so it's like, yeah, I'm going to just use even the, the really stupid, random things in your life to even like glorify myself. And so, so let's say, hypothetically speaking, he didn't give you any illustration. He uses that story from your life to minister <laughs> so to us. True. And so I that just so true. God uses everything. 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 Even the boring That's stuff. So good. I love that so much. Yeah. It was so cool because. 
It, it's crazy. Um, I was recording a podcast yesterday mm. and we were talking about generosity. Mm. And of course, when you're talking about generosity, what do you want to do after you want to go be generous? Like when your <laughs> yeah. mind's on this, you're like, I'm going to go do this. Yeah. So um, last night uh, I had an opportunity to, to be generous with someone, but it was mm. so cool because in the midst of me literally doing the act, like going to get the thing that I was about to give to this lady at the store, this girl comes up to me and she has like tears in her eyes. And she just hugs me and she says, I just want to say thank you. She said, I listened to your podcast and I was actually listening to it in the store. And she was mm-hmm. like, and then I looked up and you were there. That's and crazy. she said, if if you didn't have your podcast, I don't have anyone in my life to teach me the lessons you're teaching me. Wow. And it was just really powerful. We mm-hmm. both tearing up, hugged each other. It was really sweet. And yeah. it was just an amazing moment because... I was like impacted by the podcast, just having the conversations with the people Mm -hmm. and doing something that impacted me. And then she came up and she was impacted. And I think, you know, whenever you're having conversations about the Lord, when you're, when you have the IC, it's amazing in ministry because I know a lot of people talk about like burnout. You talk about, um, you know, just the weariness and there's totally that. There's totally hard times, but it is amazing that you're ministered to as well when you're Mm -hmm. ministering to other people because of what God's doing in your life. And Mm so I love that you said it, like everything is used for the good. Mm -hmm. Everything Mm -hmm. is used for not only the people who are receiving, but Mm -hmm. you and how God's working through you with your gifting. And it's just a really beautiful thing when you see kingdom work. Like it's, it's incredible. Well, I was just going to ask you about, it's kind of changing the subject a little bit, but about podcasting, because I was just kind (laughs) of, Mentioning the power of podcasting yes. and you and your husband have an awesome podcast. If you have not listened to it, go check out their podcast. Mm-hmm. Y'all are just straight up the real deal. Like you do not, <laughs> you don't shy away from anything. It's so uh-huh. good. That's why people listen because, because you're teaching lessons to people that they wouldn't be taught unless yeah. you guys had, you know, the willingness to go there. Is that something that you and Preston decided, like, we're going to live and be the real deal? Have you always been that way? Where does that leadership style yeah. um, and just who you are, where does that come from? I think it's temperament. I think it's our personalities. Um, yeah, I was, before I met Jesus, I was really, really honest to the point of, like, it was just ridiculous, the stuff I would say. I would tell people they breath stink, you know, like it just, it was just, I was reckless and Preston was too. And so it's, it's, it was when the Lord saved us that he sanctified that kind of authenticity um, mm. because it just takes a lot of work for me to be fake. And that's not to say that I don't have moments of shame where I want to kind of mutate and be something else, but I think I push against it because um, I see, I see authenticity as a kind of ministry and I'm going to explain what I mean. When I first started to be in the speaker space, cause I started off as a poet, the poetry space is primarily black with spoken word space. And then I started to move more into uh, white evangelical spaces, which is fine, but in it, I felt the temptation to change. Hmm. to mm-hmm. to not sound like myself, to not mm-hmm. be myself so I could be accepted or yep. seen. And I remember I pushed against it because it, it, it just felt so unnatural. But I remember when I felt like the Holy Spirit was showing me that I want to use that too. Like, mm-hmm. I want you to show people that you can be woman, you can be black, you can even not be the girliest girl and be a, a woman Bible teacher. And I want to <laughs> use that for my glory as well. So it okay. isn't even just the communication of truth, but also the embodying of truth through this body, right? Mm-hmm. Like this mm-hmm. body was made by God. My culture mm-hmm. was given to me, like my history, all that it comes with, with me being a uh, in a single parent household, with me not knowing my daddy like that, with me being molested, with me being mm-hmm. gay, with me being a porn actor, with me being a, like, God wants to bring all of that into the now and use that too. And wow. so that's what we're doing is that we're just showing wow. everybody and we're attempting to show everybody that God wants to use your real self.
Y'all, I love a good holiday tradition, and I am just now starting to decorate for Christmas. You know, normally I'd like to wait till after Thanksgiving, but this year I am just getting all the itch. I cannot wait to start. And one thing I love is putting up pictures all over the house of years past, but I have something better this year. An Aura digital picture frame is the perfect gift and so awesome for your home because you can share all your legendary pictures with your, from your favorite holiday memories with people that you love. This isn't the clunky old digital frame from 20 years ago. There's no USB, no memory card, and no hassle. It only takes up to two minutes to set up with the Aura app, and there's unlimited storage, so you can keep every one of those awesome holiday memories in just one place for all to see, which is way easier than the way that I usually do it. These are just uh, a few reasons that I love this thing. It's the best digital picture frame according to Wirecutter, The Strategist, and Wired Magazine. Gifting an Aura frame is sure to make you the favorite relative this season, especially since you can preload photos and videos of all those family favorite hilarious memories from all the years. Y'all know my family is huge and we have all kinds of traditions and so I can save any time during the hectic holiday season that is much appreciated and I love that every Aura frame comes packaged in a premium gift box with no price tag so I can save on time and wrapping paper. I probably shouldn't say this on this podcast because I'm sure my grandparents listen but if you can keep a secret I am gifting this to my grandparents this year. It's a great gift, a win-win for grandparents because you can see all the pictures of their grandkids and it's so cute. I love putting up pictures all over the house but it's so nice to have a place where you can put multiple of your pictures and all your memories even videos and you can invite others to see it too. It's such a fun thing. So give the perfect gift this holiday by visiting auraframes.com slash woe today and get $30 off their best selling frames. These frames sell out quickly though so you need to get yours before they're gone. That's aura a-u-r-a frames.com slash woe and use the promo code WOE to get $30 off their best selling frames. Terms and conditions apply. That's so good, Jackie. And I'm so, I'm truly like so thankful that you do show your real self because yeah. it's such a refreshing gift because you don't get what you get from you from anybody else, you know, yeah. um, which is such a gift because sometimes, you know, you go into these spaces and it's like, everyone's the same. And it's like, yes. hold on, why is everybody the same? You know, <laughs> because I know you aren't created the same. And so it's such a refreshing gift to get to see, you know, how God made you, but then also you sharing your testimony and the things that you've struggled with and, and your perspective. And um, I don't know, again, this is kind of back to you can teach me how to talk to you. So I don't know if this is an okay thing to say, but one of my favorite things about following you is that you do like you, you bring all of who you are and your culture and the people following you are the same. And so one of my favorite things about following you is your comment section is the funniest comment (laughs) section ever. And you know, I just have to say, it is hilarious. And my comment section is not like that. And I'm like, where are all my people? Like, why are y'all funny? Am I not? I'm not like attracting the funny people, but it really is like the black culture. That's just funnier. Like yeah. the comments are hilarious. It's that's rowdy. Funny. It's funny. It's straight up. And me and my mom will be like, oh, did you see that post Jackie said? And then did you read the comments? Because like y- y'all are like hilarious. So you bringing you is bringing people like you that's to deep. have their voice and their spot. And yeah. uh, even you know, it's just it's amazing. It's beautiful. Yeah. And so I I love that you said that. And That's deep. I think your authenticity attracts others' authenticity as well. Now, we got to give people, we got to give people that listen to Sadie, hey, like, be funny. Be yourself. Come on now. Like, we got to give them permission. Like, we want you to My be funny. My whole thing is live original. Be yourself. <laughs> And just be funny, you know, <laughs> like, come on. And then I'm being funny and people are like, how can you do those dances and preach on the stage? I'm like, cause I'm fun. Yeah. Cause I'm a human and yeah. this is how God made me. And so I, I don't know. I love it. But yeah, y'all's authenticity. It really does. It's so real and it is uh, so attractive, especially in a world that's so filtered. And I think people are going to be seeing more, the more and more like AI comes out and all things become more fake, more and more people are going to crave authenticity yes. and so yeah we're going to be seeking that but also to those listening like live that you know because your authenticity is just as important as the influencers that you follow because you're influencing people's lives so um you know you just posted this 
this reel the other day talk about being real you're crazy <laughs> but you're I talking say? about you're talking about mature men oh yeah they know what they want yeah which you're that was hilarious by the way but let's talk about that for a second because yes. there are a lot of girls out there waiting on their man to finally commit and it's been 10 years and just speak a little to why god put that on your heart because that was a now word <laughs> <laughs> it's funny. I was in the mountains doing a shoot with Lifeway. And I was like, let me uh, talk to these women while I got makeup on. And so <laughs> I, I, I think I've, I've just seen it. I've seen where people waste their time and they waste they waste a lot of years waiting on a man to make a decision. And I, I've never I've just never seen or heard a story of a man, a mature one who didn't know who his wife was. At, like they always know at least within six months to a year. That's I've just, so true. I've just never seen it take that long. You know what I'm it's saying? True. And so like mm-hmm. when my husband, his friends, like it's just a thing. And so I, I wanted to kind of affirm that perspective so that women know that it's not you, it's him. Mm-hmm. Yep. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And so just go, don't even waste your time. Like, don't don't do that. And I think the I think some of it is you're comfortable. So if you've been with somebody for three, four, five, six, and I think it's I, I want to say it's different if y'all are like y'all have decided to wait to finish school or mm-hmm. to, you know, get a law degree or like because I've seen where people yeah. say, let's get our degrees first. And then I yeah. think that's different than somebody that's just legitimately there is no plan. There is no vision. He's just dragging you along. I think some of it is if you've been with that person for a long time, it feels comfortable and it feels safe to stay there. It feels scary to to say no, to back away, to commit potentially to loneliness, to get back on the dating scene, to like, will I ever get married with a, like, that's a scary thing. And so I think we have to be reminded that God is a good father, right? Mm -hmm. And so if marriage is God's will for me, then I don't have to, I don't have to put so much burden on what I do or Mm -hmm. don't do to ensure that it happens. Right. Like I want to make wise decisions and yet surrender those things to God that only he can quench. So, so true. I love that. And I I remember being at a time whenever I was younger and in a serious relationship thinking, you know, I don't want to start over, you know, and this feels safer. It feels scarier to start over. But truly, when it comes to marriage and the person you're going to spend the rest of your life with, that is just not a uh, situation to be complacent in. I mean, that is not the time to be like, play it safe. That's the person you're going to spend your entire Absolutely life not. with Absolutely and not. have your children with. And I think back to that thought, thinking like, oh, this feels safer. And like, what that was like such false perspective because yes. this is the biggest decision ever. And it is going to um, really it's really going to be what your life, pan- what, th- what you decide here and now, whether you're going to play it safe or you're going to actually wait and let God bring the person into your life that you're mm-hmm. supposed to be with is going to determine really the quality of your life in a lot Everything. of ways. And I'm just so thankful that I, you know, took a risk, if you will, but really just leaned in and trusted the Lord because now being married to Christian, having my two girls, I don't want to even imagine my life any different. And yeah. so, yeah, that's not the time to be like, ah, oh, I just it's play it not. safe. Like if you're going to take a risk, you know, take a risk between like almond milk and oat milk. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like if I want, if I want matcha or chai, like that's, that's what you, not somebody that the Bible says you will be one flesh with. Oof. That's that's huge. And so mm-hmm. the, the 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 seriousness of it begs you to be very like if you got if you got to go, because even I'm going to use Preston, for example, Preston was in a relationship with somebody before he proposed to me before, before he pursued me. And he was trying to discern if that was his wife because she cooked for him. She was really kind, really nice. Like she had all of these qualifications, but he didn't necessarily feel peace. And so he told her, he said, Hey, I'm going to go on a break and I'm going to fast because I need to hear God's voice. Hmm. And he fasted, uh, he fasted and prayed. He didn't fast for two weeks straight, but he fasted and prayed for about two weeks. And in the prayer, he said, the person that kept coming to his mind was Jackie Hill. Cause that used to be my name. He was like, wow. Jackie Hill. And, and then he started to realize, he was like, is the Lord saying that Jackie Hill is my wife, not this wow. other person? And he starts to think through my friendship and my giftings and the way I've helped him and served him and honored him. And he realized in that time that he was pursuing the, the wrong person, right? Wow. And so I say that because I think 
even if let's say you don't know what to do, take some time away and pray mm-hmm. and fast. Mm-hmm. We'll talk about fasting it's great. enough. Like fast and then get in community to discern those thoughts or those unctions or those feelings with wise people so that you can make the proper decision. That is so good. I actually did the same thing dating Christian. Um, We took a couple of days to like fast and pray separately and not communicate with each other, which I do think sometimes, like I said, I had to get up and go on a walk. I Mm -hmm. had to actually be like, we cannot communicate for a couple of days because, you know, your emotions are going to lie to you sometimes. Your feelings are going to lie to you. Your hormones are going to lie to you. Your uh, physical attraction (laughs) will lie to you. All of those different things. And so I was like, okay. I need to step away and I need to be with the Lord. And it's so cool because at the time, my parents had this uh, guest house and it's like farmland. And so I went out there for three days and like walked around, prayer walked, sat by the pond, prayed. And you know what is so cool? That is where we got engaged. And then that is where we ended up living for two years and we got married. So it's just so sweet. But But I always think back, like anytime I had any kind of like, hard thing, even in dating engagement, I would think back to those three days where it was so clear what the Lord said. And, um, you know, it's so good to kind of have that moment where pressing and look back and be like, I know what the Lord said. Yep. This is what he said. And this, so that's why I can be confident to break up with this person and, you know, be confident to step forward with Jackie. And, you know, you want to be, you want to, you want to be confident in the steps that you're taking. So many of us are so um, unsure and it's okay because, you know, you don't know everything about life, but when you're walking with the Lord, even though you don't know what your future holds you can be confident in the next step because he's lighting your path you yes. know so yeah man this is so good this is a very rich conversation <laughs> i mean sometimes when i'm podcasting i kind of forget we're podcasting uh-huh. and we're just hanging out and uh, this is like that's the best kind of podcast um but it before sure is. it really is because I've, so I've had conversations with people where it's like we didn't have to even record this because it wasn't that interesting. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so like, true. It's just like we could have just we could have just nixed all of it and just stayed or in our it's bed. Like, or it's like, you know, we recorded it, but it's like this is the same thing that I've talked about with every other person. You could go yep. find this if you, you Google my name. But it's so great when you just get like what's on your heart right now. You yeah. know, what are we thinking about? What are we talking about on this yeah. subject, that subject? And that's what people are really I think with my podcast and your podcast, people are leaning in mm. to to have those conversations. Maybe they're mm. not having with friends yet, but they desire to have a little mm. bit more depth to them, more truth to them. Yeah. Um you're you're talking about the things that matter in life and sometimes we can just be shallow in our day-to-day so it helps yeah. you lean in so yeah. I'm glad we're talking about this and I saw that you said on Instagram something that you've been thinking about that you're talking about I think at next year's glory event is women in the bible and oh. so before we close give us a little uh tease as to what God's put on your heart and why you're stoked about sharing that because I think you know I'm I'm excited to listen into that and also, I know people ask me those questions all the time about like wh- how Jesus saw women and especially in women's ministry, people yeah. are going to ask that and you're going to get that question. But sure. overarching, like, why is that on your heart for now? Yeah. So that was the the glory conference that I do. That was the theme of this year. And so we had nine cities and basically the whole goal was to kind of, how do you? I don't want to say defend Jesus's love of women, but low key to defend Jesus's love of women um, through good. two texts in particular. And so I talked through Genesis 16, which is uh, the story of Hagar and mm-hmm. John four, which is the woman at the well. I think cool. a story like Hagar makes us feel really awkward and weird if we read through it. Right. Because you mm-hmm. have Hagar, this Gentile slave girl who Sarai uses, legitimately uses to uh, have her baby because she's tired of waiting on God. And then um, she starts to feel a way that Sarai or Hagar is treating her with contempt. And so they kick her out the house, Mm -hmm. you know, no, thus Hagar flees. She's in the wilderness. God catches up with her. He like, Hey, where are you going? She like, Hey, I'm going, I'm going back home. I'm going to Egypt. He like, nah, go back to Sarai and submit. (laughs) Like that text bothered me. For a long time, because it feels like God, like you see this woman is suffering, like she's pregnant, she's enduring all these things, is suffering. Like, why would you do that? But when you read the text presupposing goodness into it, and what I mean Mm -hmm. by that is, if Jesus says that God is good, Jesus is not a liar. So that means Mm -hmm. that every time I see God in any text, he is always going to be good, even if I can't discern it. 
And so when you presuppose goodness, you will find goodness. And the goodness in that text in particular is how he takes care of this woman, how he provides for this woman, how he sees this woman. He says that he is Elroy, the God whose I see you. And so I think that more we can get into the theological discussions about should a woman preach? Should she pastor? Can she be an elder? I think the fundamental thing is, does God see women? Hmm. And yes, he does. Does God use women? Yes, he does. Does God does God care for women? Yes, he does. And how do we know that? Genesis 127. God made male and female in his image. And therefore, we know that we have value and dignity that nobody but God has given us. And so why in the world would he die for the church, equip the church for the work of ministry, pour out gifts through the power of his spirit and not use women? to populate the earth, not just with babies, but with image bearers through evangelism, through teaching and discipleship. So come on. Yeah. He loves come us. on, girl. She said, so yeah, that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's all I got to say. He loves us. Oh man. Well, can you watch that online? Your message? Not from yet. Conference? Not yet. But uh, in a couple, probably January, cause I'm taking a social media break in December, probably top Great. of the year. I'll upload them to my YouTube channel. Awesome. Yeah. Uh, I think what I did was I probably clicked on the video and it was pinned mm-hmm. and it, I thought it was now. That's my fault. I need uh, to unpin no. that thing. <laughs> no, I love that though, because that makes me more excited because now we don't have to wait. We That's get true. to actually listen now and it's already out there yeah. um, or it will be out there. I'm so excited to listen to that. That's so good. And I love yeah. what you said, like when you're seeking to find good, you you will find good, especially in God who is good. And I've actually realized that recently in my life, because last year we went through a situation with Honey where um, it was just a pretty traumatic situation. And I mm-hmm. haven't shared like all the details, but I've shared in bits and pieces that yeah. she um, had to be air flighted and we were in the hospital and it was an extremely scary situation. And um, it was like very interesting because I never had my faith really rocked like I did then. Um, and it just rocked me like mm. it really did. And I feel like I was frustrated with God, which I'm never really one to get frustrated with yeah. God. And I just had like so many questions. Well, it was really interesting because... I really worked that out the past year, like worked out why I felt that way, worked it out in scripture, worked it out with mentors and people around me and in prayer. And it was so interesting because recently um, Haven actually had to be in the hospital for something totally different and she's fine. But um, my perspective was so different. And even though it was bad and even though I was, of course, scared for my daughter and it was a bad situation, I, instead of being mad at God, I could see his hand leading up like the whole way, even to us being in the hospital, it's like, wow, like, thank you that you told me to take her in. Thank mm. you that I saw that sign. Like, I just saw him in it, you know, and I saw his goodness and his kindness and his mercy in the whole thing, and then his faithfulness and how he brought her through and the doctors. And like, it was just like, I, I could just see him all in it. And I think that's because um, from what happened last year to what happened this year, uh, I kind of anchored my truth about who he is. Like he is good and that's who he's going to be. And it's not me trying to convince myself that when it doesn't look like that, is that I really know that and I can see it even in a hard uh, situation or dark world. And um, actually, (laughs) this is a second time I quoted Ben Stewart, but he said in his, that same sermon, he said, um, and it, it was one of those moments where he said it and I was like, whoa, that was for me. He said, you know, that day when they were on, out, the disciples were out in the boat with Jesus and he was sleeping and the storm came. He said the problem was they were more certain in the power of the storm than they were in the power of God in the boat. And I think that last year I was like just more certain in the power of the storm. And this year I was more certain of the power of God. That's excellent. And so it's so good. Like, I just love that when you seek good, when that's in the forefront of your mind, because you know, he's good, you're going to see it in all the things that he does. Um, Anyways, this conversation has been extremely fruitful. It's been so good. I am so thankful for each time you've now come on the podcast, for each book that you've written. All three of them have impacted me, inspired me, um, you know, even just talking to you, I, I was just recalling devotional after devotional, yeah. and that just shows the impact that it's really made on my uh, life. And so thank you for thank what you've you. written. Thank you, know, you for your authenticity and all the things, Jackie. Yeah. You're awesome. Well, you know, I, I respect you a lot. Um, I say, I, I feel like I've said this, but I just, I think in, we don't want to call it an industry, but it is an industry, the author, speaker space. And I think you are a light in it. 
because my times with you, observing you, watching you, even like at Propel or all the different events that we, not Propel, you know, events we've been at. I'm like, Mm -hmm. I think she really loves Jesus. (laughs) Like, I think (laughs) she's not here just to Mm -hmm. be here. Like she is like Mm -hmm. legit. And so I just, I just appreciate that about you. I really do. Thank you for it. That means so much. It's, it's, it's sad that you don't always feel that, but truly, um, whenever you are around people that just love the Lord, it is the greatest thing. And seeing people who love the Lord have a platform is something I'm so grateful for. And so as I've seen your platform continue to grow and escalate, it's been such a joy, honestly, Mm -hmm. because I'm like, thank you, God, that you're using her voice, someone Mm -hmm. who's speaking truth and her family as one that people can look up to and be inspired by. And you're the real deal. And it's truly, it's truly a joy to see everything in your life blossom and grow and the more things you put out. And it's so fun because whenever I, I was telling some friends to have you on the podcast they're mm-hmm. like what that's so exciting and so <laughs> even that my friends get excited is like it's awesome so yeah. thanks for being who you are and thanks for saying that it means a lot no problem appreciate you